Hey everyone, this is Hugh from Plaguelands Media bringing you another board game video, this time Evil Dead 2 the board game. This was a Kickstarter that went uh, bad basically, there was a lot of trouble with it and Jasco Games kindly stepped in and uh, ended up finishing the game and uh, sending out copies to all of the backers along with the extra pack which is what I'll be playing with today. Now before I uh, get into that, I just want to address something. Um, I had uh, someone reach out to me recently um, asking me why do I have to swear at the beginning of the videos. And I've thought about this quite a bit and, you know, they're right. There's no need for curse words or swear words or anything like that. So today I've decided just for them I'm going to tone it down uh, a little bit. So with that said, please follow us on Facebook. That's Plaguelands Media. You can visit us at plaguelandsmedia.com. Follow Ian Van Gamet on Instagram. You can look at our merchandise on Redbubble. We have some t-shirts and books and uh, all kinds of things like that. One moment. Oh yeah. Goose Island IPA is a very nice drop. You have the uh, Hue and Play Glands Media seal of approval. <clears throat> so with that said, I think it's time to get this bleeping bleep to the table. Oh, fuck yeah. I'm glad I didn't fuck that son of a bitch intro Okay, this is Evil Dead 2, the board game by Jasco Games. Now, this is ultimately a multiplayer game, three or more players, uh, because there are hidden secret mechanics and things like that, but I'm just going to be playing it solo just for the story, so it's going to lose something in that kind of traitor element uh, of the game, but it's still fun enough. Uh, game to deserve a playthrough. So today I will be playing with Ash, of course, the hero of the Evil Dead movies. Uh, five wounds, three attack, two speed, one virtue. Annie, four wounds, one attack, three speed, three virtue. And Ed, five wounds, two attack, three speed, and one virtue. The first thing I'm going to do I'm going to shuffle the corruption cards and give each player a face down corruption card. This will uh, tell you if you are human or deadite. And the only way you can reveal this corruption card is if you get a second corruption card or you pick up a page from the Necronomicon. And that is our ultimate goal. We have to go around to all these spaces and scavenge here, trying to find the pages from the Necronomicon, bring them to the portal, and we can seal it here. We need six pages to seal it. If one of the characters turns out to be a deadite and starts working against the, uh, the party, then they have to get six pages here to summon the ultimate evil. We have our fantastic uh, player boards that tell you how many of each item there are and exactly what they do. So the alcohol we discard to get two bonus actions. The cooked chicken we can heal wounds. Leather gloves we can steal items from another player. The rabbit's foot we can re-roll any number of our cursed dice. Wooden spikes. Uh, you can place a trap on a space. Looks like this. And any deadites that go into the trap will automatically die. The pendant. Only human players can take the pendant. And 
we can succeed on a virtue check instead of rolling the flashlight we can flip two tokens in any two areas adjacent to us face up barricade we discard to place a barricade over a door or window that borders your area now there are barricade tokens but I'm going to be using these barricade miniatures that uh, came with the extra boxed set for the game. Holy Water, we can reveal one corruption card from any player and leave it face up. This can force a player to become a deadite if they have the deadite card. Running Shoes, get plus one speed. Chainsaw, you have plus one permanent attack success. Every time, as long as you hold the item token, there's only one chainsaw in the game. The Kandarian Dagger, before rolling, discard to gain two successes. And the Axe, reroll one die per Axe you have whenever you attack. And moving, removing a barrier doesn't cost an action. The Shotgun Shells, we can discard to attack your current area or an adjacent area, ignoring any neutral or failure results. So basically you're just blowing the crap out of anything. And then with the Necronomicon pages there's some spells you can cast but I won't go through those at the moment. We have our event deck here. Um, Ash is the first player because he is holding the Necronomicon token. Uh, first player will change every turn. Ash is currently in the sitting room, Annie is in the living room area, and Ed is in the study. These miniatures, while they're not particularly detailed, uh, they still look really cool. So, Okay, so Ash is the first player. He has a speed of... Th uh, Two, speed of two. I'm going to move him one, two for his first action. You get three actions in a um, three player game. I'm then going to scavenge here. So to scavenge, we flip these tokens over. We have two pages of the Necronomicon. You pick one and then you put the other one face back. So I'm going to scavenge to get one page of the Necronomicon. That means I can reveal if I'm a human or a deadite. Human. In a regular three-player game, you would leave that hidden so the other players wouldn't know if you're a human or a deadite. I'm going to scavenge again and I'm going to get uh, the other Necronomicon page, but I have to go back a step before we do anything. I have to draw an event card This should have been done before Ash's first turn. Okay event. There's more of them spawn one deadites at B and F These are our deadite minions so we have one spawn at F one spawn at B and draw an additional event and immediately resolve it. That sucks. If the event deck ever runs out, we lose. Okay, event. The fruit seller. Spawn one deadite in F. Just down there. And we get our first boss of the game. Spawn Henrietta at the seller trapdoor right where Annie is. So let's find Henrietta. This is Henrietta. She's got uh, her saggy boobs. And she spawns right there. Okay, special rules for Henrietta requires three successes on the same attack roll to defeat. Annie only has an attack of one, so she cannot defeat Henrietta. She's going to have to run. And moves as a deadite 
counts as three deadites when attacking. So right off the bat, uh, we have a boss on the board. This is going to be a quick, quick game. Okay, first thing Annie is going to do is scavenge here, and she gets the axe. Now the good thing about these player boards is you can just put it, put the token on there so you know that you have it. Uh, she is going to get the hell out of here. Um, the thing about this game is you don't you actually want to split the party. You don't want to all be in the same area because if a Deadite attacks you, they attack everyone. It's not like you can allocate the wounds. So she's going to go one, two, uh, three, and then she will scavenge for her last action. We have wooden stakes and running shoes. Uh, I'm going to take the wooden stakes. Hopefully I can use them to create a trap. Ed. Ed's first thing is he's going to scavenge and he gets some chicken that was just sitting in the study for some reason. Uh, he is going to move, he has a move of two. He's going to move through the window and then he's going to scavenge again. And we have Necronomicon page and gloves. I know what I'm taking. I'm taking the Necronomicon page. Now we get to see if Ed is human or deadite. He is human. Okay, that's the end of the player turn. All the deadites will now move towards the closest person, they move one space, uh, Henrietta is going to climb out the window, okay we don't have any deadites in an area with uh, players, so uh, we don't have to resolve the attack step. And then first player moves to Annie, and we draw an event card to start the next round. Event, Rain. We spawn a Deadite in H and A. So Ash at the moment is getting surrounded a little bit. Any character that begins their turn outside has one speed this, minus one speed this round. Uh, everyone is outside, but Annie can at least move two, so she is going to go one, two, and she will search, or scavenge I should say. We have gloves and shotgun shells. She will put the shotgun shells there, she's going to leave the gloves. You put the tokens face down. Uh, in a three-player game, you know, you wouldn't have to tell uh, the, the other players what was there. Or you could tell them what was there, or you could lie about it. So that's why you put them face down. I'm putting them face down because I like this idea that I have to remember what that token was uh, instead of just leaving it face up and making the game a little easier. So she moved for two because of the rain. She scavenged, she is going to move one, two into the woodshed because the woodshed has three items instead of two. Uh, Ed. Ed has two attack. Ed is going to move here. He's going to attack. I'm looking for chainsaws. We also have skull and two blanks. So the chainsaws is what you want to get, but um, if you
roll um, a blank and an attack. Well, an equal number of uh, successes and failures, then he has to make a virtue check. And he got no successes. He got the skull and a blank, which means he takes a corruption card. Because it's his second one, he can look at it straight away. And Ed is a deadite. So I'll remove his miniature. Whoops, wrong one. And I'll use this evil miniature in its place. So now, uh, his first move, he moved one, because it's raining, then he attacked, he has one move left. Now Deadites will not attack him, and his job now is to try and uh, summon. So he's going to scavenge, and we have Necronomicon page, and with the stakes, he's going to take the Necronomicon page. Now this is bad because he is very close to the portal, so he can move here and start putting the pages for the summoning on there uh, if he was so inclined. Ash. Ash is going to move one, two, oh no, he can only move one. That's right, he has movement, he can only move one because it is uh, raining. He's going to move another one, and Ash is going to attack. And he got two successes, so he kills this Deadite. Okay, end of the turn, the Deadites move. They are now closer to Annie, so they are going to go after her. Uh, this Deadite is closer to Ash, and Henrietta moves next. No one is in a space with characters. We move to the event phase. He's gone bad. Spawn one deadite at H. Which is down here. Oh, I didn't move this deadite. There we go. And now we get our second boss of the game. Bad Ash. Bad Ash is... Right here. He's missing his hand. He has his boomstick. And we spawn him in the study. So, what are the rules for Bad Ash? In our Evil Dead Extras pack. He can move up to two areas. Any Deadite player can call out to him, telling him where to move. Um, and it only takes one success to defeat him, but you have to make a Virtue 2 check when you do, because it's Ash. You don't want to kill Ash. Okay. Well, this is going to be very, very simple. One, two, that's his first. He's going to take his two pages and put them on the summoning track for his second. And for his third, uh, he's going to go down here and see what's down there. Ash. Ash is going to scavenge. We have running shoes. Candarian dagger and a flashlight. I'm going to take the dagger. If you remember that dagger, uh, before rolling for your attack, I can discard it to gain two successes. So that might be a way to get rid of Henrietta. So his first was to scavenge. His second is going to be... move here and then he's going to scavenge this spot 
stakes or a barricade, I'm going to take the barricade. I think. And just to show you, I'm going to use the barricade to barricade the window. Uh, really doesn't have all that much of an effect. Uh, I just wanted to show you that it looks pretty cool. Okay, Annie, she is in trouble. So she is going to scavenge chicken leg, spikes, or the pendant discard to pass a virtue check. Okay, she is going to move. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Um. Oh, okay. She's going to move one, two, three through the window. And then she is going to move one, two, three into the secret passage. Okay, deadites move. These deadites are going to move through the window, but only one of them can, the other one gets blocked. Uh, Henrietta is going to move in through the window. This deadite will move here. This deadite will move here. Bad Ash will climb out the window. This deadite will move here. Now we have a deadite in the same. So, uh, We're looking for chainsaws, that means we fought them off. If we get that, we get a wound. And if we get the blank space, that means I have to drop the Necronomicon page, a Necronomicon page, and make a virtue check. Come on, chainsaw. There we go, we fought off the Deadite. And now Ash is first player again. First thing we do, we draw an event card. Gathering darkness. Spawn one deadite in I and B. I and B with the bad Ash. Ash is in a little bit of trouble, I think. For the rest of the round, all characters lose one virtue. Virtue checks with zero automatically fail. Uh, Annie has a virtue of three, so she's okay. Ash has a virtue of one, so if he has to make a virtue check, it will be an automatic fail. Ash. Ash is going on the offensive here, I think. Ah, oh, I can't. Yep, I'm going to attack this deadite. And I've got one chainsaw. So I take him out, but I got more uh, failures than successes, so I have to take a virtue check. My virtue is one, but I know I'm a human because there is only one deadite in this game. Okay, second. What do I want to do? Um... See, I shouldn't have blocked that window, because I want to go inside and I want to take out Henrietta. Second, I'm going to move here, and then I'm going to scavenge Necronomicon page or shotgun shells. Uh, we need those Necronomicon pages. Annie, she's going to scavenge here, and she finds some holy water, kind of useless. If 
she had Necronomicon pages, she could run straight out here and chuck them in. One, two, three. One, two. Okay. Okay, does the... Mm, would Ed go after Annie? Or... Would he... Go for pages? I think he's going to go for the pages. One, two, three, one, and then scavenge. Necrodomicon page, whiskey, and there is the chainsaw. Oh, he's going to take the Necronomicon page, however, because he wants to open that portal. Okay, end of turn. Bad Ash. He's coming for Annie. Deadite's moving there. Deadite's moving there. Deadite's moving there. Henrietta. Deadite's moving there. It's going to go in the window. Oh, Badash moves two. I'm sorry. Badash moves two spaces, if I uh, remember rightly. So, uh, Badash is going to attack uh, Annie. It's a blank. Doesn't take a wound, but Annie has to take a Virtue test. And... She passed with one success. Okay. Annie becomes first player. She's going to attack Ash. She only has one attack, but Ash only needs one damage. And she manages to defeat Bad Ash, but because she just killed Ash, in her mind, she has to make a Virtue 2 check. I need two successes. And I get them. So that was one. Second, she's going to scavenge. We have a pendant, Necronomicon page, running shoes, of course, she's going to take the Necronomicon page. And for her third action, she's kind of stuck. She's got all these deadites here. Um, wow, this event deck is running low too. She's going to move there. Okay. Ed is going to move here. He's going to scavenge. Hopefully he'll find another page. And he does. Um, and then he is going to come one, two, three. He's going to come running back to the portal because he doesn't want Ash or Annie to steal these pages. Ash is going to move there. He's going to attack his Deadite. Gets rid of him. Two successes. And he's going to move into the same space as Annie. Okay. Deadite movement. Move. 
move, move. Uh, move, move. Nobody's in a space with a deadite. That is good. Okay, first player token comes down to Ed. Draw an event card. It's quiet. Too quiet. No effect. Okay, Ed's going to move. One, two, three. He's going to chuck his pages there. And then he's going to move. One, two, and three. Hopefully he will steal the pages from Ash. Ash is going to trade all his pages to Annie. He is going to attack Ah, uh, wait. Before he does that, he's going to scavenge here. He finds one more page. He's going to trade all his pages to Annie. And then he's going to attack Ed. And he gets three successes doing three of five wounds to Ed. These are the little wound tokens you get. So Ed has taken three wounds. Okay, Annie. One, two, three. She's going to dump one, two, Three, four, five. One more and we win. Um, then she is going to move move to here. She loses her movement because there are more deadites in her space and she is going to discard her spikes to put a spike trap on the uh, porch. Okay. Deadite movement. Deadite moves in here because the spike trap is automatically killed. This deadite moves in here, this deadite moves here, this deadite will move out, blocking Henrietta, this deadite will move here. Okay, and we have one deadite with Annie, and she manages to fight him off. Okay, Ash becomes the first player. Our event, the hand turned bad, spawn one deadite on H. Randomly choose a human player to take one wound. Okay. Ash or Annie, the first one to roll uh, the chainsaw. No, the first one to roll the skull will take the wound. Ash. Annie, Ash, Annie, Ash, Ash takes a wound. And we spawn the hand in that player's area. Seriously? This is the hand miniature. You remember in the film, Ash Something evil got in his hand, so he cut it off. Okay. Well. This is what I am going to do. 
Uh, let me just show you the rules for the hands. So the hand cannot be defeated. When a player rolls one success on an attack roll, they move the hand up to five areas, and it moves three areas towards the nearest human player and attacks as a single deadite. Okay, Ash has a plan. He is going to climb in through the window. He is going to attack Henrietta. He's going to discard his dagger, Kandarian dagger, for two successes. So he just needs one success here. And he gets two, so I have defeated Henrietta. So that's second action. And third action, I'm going to move right here. Okay. Annie, 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 what are you going to do? First action. I'm going to attack this Deadite. So I have to make a Virtue check, which I passed. Second action, attack the Deadite. Third action. One, two. Hopefully the last page we need is somewhere around there. Okay. One, two. He's going to scavenge here. Shotgun shells or a flashlight, he will take the shotgun shells. And one, two, three. Setting up for next turn. Okay, deadites will move. We'll move through the window. We'll move to there. We'll move to there. And the hand will move through the window. No one is in any spaces to attack. Okay, event, look around. Spawn a dead eye at D and F. And D. <coughs> Pardon me. And in turn order, each player may look at one face down token in the same area or an adjacent area. Uh, that doesn't help Ash at all, but Annie is going to look at the top token here, and it is Whiskey. Okay, Annie becomes the first player. She's gonna scavenge. Barricade or holy water, uh, barricade, I guess. She's going to move and she will scavenge here. Holy water or the axe, she's going to take the axe. Okay, Ed is going to scavenge here. Pendant and the chicken wing. He will take the chicken wing. He cannot take the pendant because he's a deadite. He's going to, as a free action, it doesn't take an action to use tokens. He's going to eat the chicken wing to get rid of three wounds. Okay. He's going to move here and scavenge. Flashlight, page, lucky rabbit's foot. Of course he's taking the page. Okay, so there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's one more page somewhere uh, on the board. Ash. Ash is going to 
move here. He's going to attack that deadite. Easily defeats him. And then he's going to move. Uh, he's going to go into the bathroom. Basically, what I want him to do is to keep the deadites away from Annie while Annie looks for the last page that they need. Okay, deadite movement. Moving, moving, move, move. The hand moves like a deadite, right? It only moves one. Let me just check. Ah, we'll move up to three areas. Well, that last turn he went through the window. So he's going to move one, two, and three. And he will be in the bathroom with Ash. Very fitting, I guess. He will attack Ash. And Ash fights off the hand. Okay, first player moves to Ed. We get our event card. Ray of Sunlight, B and D get a Deadite. B and D. For the rest of this round, all characters gain plus one Virtue. Virtue checks with four dice automatically succeed. So Annie will automatically succeed on any Virtue checks. But we don't have many turns left. Ed. One, two, throwing his page. So now it's just a race to find the last page. One, two, three. Okay, Ash is going to fight the hand off. And he got one success. So uh, he moves the hand five spaces. One, two, three, four, five. But he has to make a virtue check, which he did not pass. So he takes another corruption card. But we know that Ash is a human. We just know that he has three corruption cards. Then he is going to move in here. And for his last action, he will attack. And he gets three successes, so he kills those two deadites. Annie. Annie, Annie, Annie. One, two, three. She is going to attack. She has two uh, axes, so she can reroll one die per axe, but she doesn't need to. And then she will scavenge. Please have the last page. Barricade and lucky rabbit's foot. Um, I'll take the lucky rabbit's foot. Okay, Deadite movement. One moves in there, one moves in there. He's going to move through the window. He's going to move three. He's going to move to there. We have two Deadites in Ash's space. So Ash takes a wound. He's down to three from five. And he has to also make a virtue check, which he succeeded. Okay, first player moves to Ash. We get our event card. Did you hear that? E and G get a deadite, and any human player carrying two or more Necronomicon pages must immediately make a virtue check. Nobody is carrying Necronomicon pages. 
G and E. First thing Ash is going to do is attack. Two successes, two deadites down. And he's going to move here and then he's going to scavenge. We found the last page of the Necronomicon. That's what we're taking. Okay, Annie, one, two, three, trade action with Ash. And one, two, three. Now one, two, three. He is going to attack. One, two, three. Yep. And he's going to attack Annie to try and steal the page, which he does. Doesn't inflict a wound, but he steals the page. Okay. Ash. One, two, one. And then he's going to attack Ed. Two successes. Still on the page right back. Okay. Deadite movements. One, 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 two, three, one, one. Okay, we have the hand in here. The hand is first going to attack Ash, does a wound, going to attack Annie also does a wound. Okay. And that means Ash has to drop the Necronomicon page down there. All right. Ed becomes first player. Next event card. We're gonna die. Place Rotten Apple Head in the doorway adjacent to the portal. Place one arm in the study and one arm in the cellar trap door. Okay, this is really cool. This is Rotten Apple Head. And he has his two arms here, so we place him in the doorway, one arm in the study, one arm on the cellar trapdoor. Let's have a look at the rules for Rotten Applehead. Cannot use spells in the same area, cannot be defeated. Uh, if you roll at least one success when attacking, uh, set the head or arm on its side to mark that it skips the next deadite turn. The head does not move, the arms move to any area with a door or window and inflicts one automatic wound to each target in the same area. Okay, Ed. He's gonna pick up the Necronomicon page. One, two, three, one, two. Ash is going to attack the hand. Two successes, 
One, two, three, four, five. That was one action. His second action, he's going to move. In third action, he's going to attack. He makes a virtue check. I believe I also take a wound. So he's on four or five and he makes a virtue check, which he succeeds at. Annie. One, two, three. One. One, two, three. Annie is going to use the shotgun shells to shoot um, Ed, which she passed. She's going to make him uh, drop the Necronomicon page and one, two, three, shoot. And, 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 uh, you know, she's going to shoot him again. Another success. Just going to do a wound to him. Okay. Deadite movements. Blocking the door. He's going on to Annie. They're already on. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. So, two deadites on Ash. He fights one of them off. And he didn't take a wound, but he has to take a virtue check, which he passes. One dead eye on Annie. Didn't wound her, but Annie has to make a virtue check, which she also passes. <coughs> Ash becomes first player. Ah, now we do an event. Surprise attack. Wow. C and E gets a dead eye. E, C, get a deadite. Each deadite minion in the same area as a character immediately attacks. Two deadites attacking Ash. And he fights one of them off, but he must make a virtue check, which he fails. Taking another corruption card. And Annie. Why don't she pass her virtue test there? Okay. Ash is going to attack these two deadites. Kills one. I got to make a virtue check because I got one skull and one chainsaw, which I pass. Um, he's going to attack again. Chainsaw kills that deadite. And he's going to move down here. Annie. She's going to move. She's going to pick up the Necronomicon page. And she's going to place it there. Thus sealing the portal and saving the earth from a deadite attack. So as you can see... <clears throat> That can either go really well or really badly. I played two games yesterday. In the first game, no one became a deadite and I sealed the portal really easily. In the second game, Ash became a deadite and decimated everyone on uh, the board. Oh, I could have also moved these arms if I wanted to anywhere with a door or a window, something like that, but it doesn't really matter. So, there you have Evil Dead 2. Like I said, this is really a multiplayer game and I was playing it uh, solo more for the story than anything else. And I think in this instance, the story played out really well, especially that mad scramble at the end um, for the 
last Necronomicon page. I don't know if I got all the rules correct. I probably didn't, but the main point of this is it's a really, really fun game. Uh, and I highly recommend it. So, thank you very much for watching. Stay safe. Have a great rest of your weekend.